Memphis was spearheaded by Ettore Sozzas, a very influential Italian designer who was also the main influence in a, in a design group called Alchemia and who wanted to surround himself with younger designers and who started the group Memphis with approximately 12 other designers. It was founded in 1981 and existed for about six years. He was in his 60s at the time and a lot of the people that came to the apartment, a lot of the younger designers, were in their 20s and 30s and it was really meant to kind of continue this path that had been forged by Alchemia to break with tasteful 70s minimalism. And there was a Bob Dylan record playing at that, and the record skipped and kept repeating Memphis. And so they went with this name Memphis. So my component of the show is looking at the before and after of the presentation here at Koenig and Clinton. So this presentation is kind of focused on probably 81 to 86 or 81 to 87, which are the real Memphis years. But we want to, to give a fuller story. And so I'm presenting some of the earlier Sotsas works from as early as 81. They wanted to go radically against it by using patterns, colors, materials that were previously not used in design. So there's this move away from traditional materials. There's this move away from, I guess, certain post-war limitations. Another way to think of this is taking function and turning it on its head. Because a lot of the laminates that you see were actually very much a part of 1950s American Populux design. And they are actually functional, but they're being re-scripted. Memphis is also the ancient capital of Egypt, and it's the birthplace of Elvis. It's that mixture of high and low laminate and Carrera marble that was joyful for them, that this wasn't just about bourgeois design. It's really nice to be able to show the work of a collective and to also acknowledge the different people that contributed. It's a way of giving credit to what it, I believe it really was, which is the closest thing to art that design ever got. Thank you.